All right, guys, so I'm going to show you some basics in Photoshop, and we're going to create a uh, quote uh, from an inspirational uh, person or movie or idea that feeds your mind. So what we want to do is find something that you find that either you've already discovered in the past or that you are going to look and find now, and you're going to write a quote, and we're going to put it on an 8.5 by 11 document in Photoshop. So I'm in Photoshop right now. If uh, you're not in Photoshop, open it in the, on your PC. If you just click down here and you should be able to find it. On the Mac, so you should click on the rocket launcher. Once you have it, just uh, right click and uh, keep it in, uh, in uh, the desktop, okay? So I'm gonna, I want it to be landscape. So that means it's 11 and a half, 11 by 8.5 and it's in this. And right now the background is white. Um, I think we're going to keep that just for the beginning. So just click create and it's going to create your document. And there's a few things that uh, we can do. So just to teach you a few basics, control plus is zoom in, control minus is zoom out. Um, you can also click the space bar to uh, move around and really there's not much to do right now. So I just prefer control plus. So I'm going to go like that and or click zero and it will uh, perfectly uh, align it, all right? So um, let's start with the Move tool. It's used to move things around. And one of the things you do is you have layers here. And layers are kind of like a piece of paper. And then if I create a new layer, and I'll use this quick icon here, so now I have two layers. So if I draw on this layer, uh, I can delete it and it'll be fine and not, um, so it's a great way to uh, add a lot to your design. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to defont.com. So, so there's three things that make graphic design interesting. So the first thing is form. So any type of form, shape, icons that you could include. Um, type, which is any different type of type. Obviously, that's why we're going to defont.com. And the third thing is obviously color. So what I've done here is I've gone here and I've searched. And if you look in the search, there's a lot here. Find one that you think will make your uh, poster look cool and stand out and maybe represent the thought. So I'm going to be using a quote. And I'll tell you what it is later. And um, I'm using something that's a little kind of like Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood. Uh, I'm going with that. Okay. And once you've downloaded um, your, your quote or your, your font, you need to double click on it and unzip it. Once it's unzipped, you actually have to install it also really important that you remember what it's called. So mine's called Sunset Boulevard and when, once it opens, I'll see, I'll see here there's an option to install. So only once this is installed is it actually going to be on my computer. Now it's a little bit different on the Mac but it's more or less the same. So make sure you have it installed. Remember what it's called. It's the first important step. Okay so one of the things I also want to do before I come and add my font, so I've downloaded and added it, is choose the proper background color. So we're actually going to probably create a gradient, but for now I just want you to also look over here and learn some of the basics. So the black here is your for, uh, your forefront color, and here's your background uh, color, okay? So um, if I choose a pen, and right now I'm on a separate layer, and I write, blah, 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 so you're going to see uh, it turn that on, and I'm actually going to just move that all the way up here so that second okay if that's happening just turn that off and it'll write it right away okay just notice it wasn't doing the right thing but that's because my opacity was at zero so you'll one thing that you should be aware of, sometimes Photoshop if you do something uh, or somebody else did it uh, it keeps those settings so sometimes you got to make sure if it's not working just ask me for help so we're gonna put it at hundred percent so I'm gonna now delete this layer so how do I quickly delete this layer go down here and click delete okay it'll ask me and it's gone so now I'm back to my background so we're ready to start out so I did say there's three things in graphic design there's form color and the the, the obviously type so I'm going to change this to a uh, black background so how do you change the color I said I wanted the background to be black but actually you could pick another color so let's yeah, if you double click in here and or on swatches or on color can kind of like just go and click in here or here and you know I'm gonna go with this blue let's pretend I want my background to be this blue I'm gonna actually switch this for a second I'm gonna go 
uh, control backspace. So now it, it adds that color. And I'm going to switch this back to, I actually want the front to be white. I'm going to unlock this too, okay? Because if I need to do something on that layer, um, I won't be able to do it if it's locked. So you need to double click on it. And I also just created another layer by clicking down here. And I'm going to put my font on that other layer. So I'm going to go get my quote. I decided to pick a quote from Frederick Nietzsche. And I really like this author. I read a bunch of his books. I recommend them. Um, so I like this one. Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. So that's a very interesting quote. So I'm going to copy that with Control C or Command C on a Mac. Then I'm going to go to my uh, document. And if you remember, my, this is where you need to remember what the name of that font was that you just down, downloaded. Mine was called Sunset. So I'm going to just click over here and I'm going to go and get it. Takes a second to load. So go get your font. If you click on it and type it, it will show up. Okay, so I just started clicking Sun, so Sunset. And here you need to know like 122. If I click on here, I will see how the how big it is. It doesn't seem big enough, so I'm gonna um, just go and make it a little bit bigger. Or actually, it is big enough, but if you want to make it bigger, you can actually type, you know, 100. I might even go 190 for me because it'll be too big. And then I will. What I'm gonna do now is go Control V, and it'll paste the font. Uh, whoops, I, I want it to be over here, so I'm gonna go Control V here. Okay, and I need to probably fix this, and it might be just too big, so I'm going to bring it down to, uh, let's go 60, and I want to fit it on my, and somewhat centrally, and I'm going to show you something. So there are some, something called smart guides, so you can see those pink lines, those are smart guides. So they kind of try to make it look uh, better, so obviously too big still so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the text tool and I'm going to go in here and I don't know why I did that but I don't I want it all to be the same font so I'm going to go uh, oh I know why it's because it's uh, th still thinks it's let's go to 60 so some times people okay going to even shrink this a little more. I was going to go to 48. And let's see if it's probably a good size. I'm going to use the move tool. And make sure you're on the right layer. Um, so I'm going to maybe again click over here. Some people don't want to hear the truth. And I'll go because they don't want their illusions destroyed. Nietzsche. So I'm going to place this centrally now. You see how there's like a cross? That means it's perfectly centered. So if I don't like the way something looks, I can always like these lines are considered as font. So I'm gonna, I can go like this and I can even make this a different font. So maybe some type of italic font. So I'm going to just look really quickly here and I'll go Frederick Nietzsche like this. And that looks pretty cool. And I could even put that on a separate layer if I want. Control X. And look, if I click Control V, it's going to, well, it didn't do it. So what I'm going to do is click here. And I'm going to create a new layer. Okay, so down here. And I'm going to type Control V for the font. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to create another text layer and then uh, paste it okay so now I'm able to uh, move this around and it's separate and you know if I want to center this better I let you play around this you'll have a little more time than me and then I'm going to go to this layer and I need to click on it and I'm going to have this on separate like this it looks a lot better okay now the other thing I want to teach you is how to use a gradient so we're going to use the gradient tool and we're going to click up here and we're going to create a new gradient. So what we want to do is we'll add maybe, let's go with four colors. And when you click below, it adds. And the color that it is is, so if you don't like this color, what you do is you double click on it. And let's pretend you want uh, blue. And then we want, let's 
go white and then blue again click OK and if you want some specific color you're better off using swatches and in fact I'm also going to show you how to use color rules so let's go get some nice rules that are already uh, part of the program and this is a really powerful way you don't go under Adobe color themes and so one thing that's really hard as an artist or beginning artist is how do you match up the right colors well Adobe is already taking care of this so they know you know like people don't want to waste their time learning all these color complementary uh, contemporary uh, uh, triad uh, you know there's a whole bunch of them so um, if you go in here you can basically explore and there's some that are already done or you can create and if you want to create your own what you can do is find them so this is a bit of a review of grade 10 class if you took it uh, so there are different rules so right now we're in analogous so they're colors that are kind of along the same uh, spectrum so in the reds and they follow the scientific kind of like rule so a monochromatic it's basically all the same colors but in different tones so if you use that color rule and maybe you know, you're trying to create a, a poster with all these red tones that would be a good idea uh, triad which is like uh, you know colors that are basically uh, diametrically kind of like uh, maybe that's not the right word but you, you can see here you got your uh, triads um, you got your complementary colors you know this is often you know how do you match colors together you know we know green goes with red so these rules are there you got your compounds uh, you got your shades I encourage you to go read more about this if you want to you know learn more about this I think I'm gonna go with just uh, and and here's the thing I really like this color so I'm gonna go with that do I get so how do I get this color here I basically pick so either click the eyedropper tool or use the hotkey which is I and so this color goes in the middle and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pick uh, let's go with uh, complementary colors okay once I have this I'm gonna add it to my swatches okay so now I have these five colors and I'm gonna create a gradient using those so I'm gonna come on over here and I'm gonna open the gradient tool I'm gonna to add these five colors so we can and then click up here so I, I have five so one two three four five so I'm gonna click over here oops control Z and if you need to do more than one undo in uh, Photoshop it's control alt Z so I'm gonna click over here so I'm gonna add the first color over here click on it add the second color go over here add the third color go over here add the fourth and I'm gonna go over here and add the fifth so I'm gonna click create a new you know gradient so I'll call it one click new so there it is so now it's up here so gradient there's several ways to do it so the first setting you see it up here is I'm gonna go like this and what it will do is apply the gradient in the background and I'll pretend maybe I'm happy with that or maybe I want to pick a use a radial gradient so pick the one that you think works best for you and uh, you know maybe that one's cool so there's several here so I'm going to show them quickly and I'm so far prefer number two okay and I'm going to go oh this is the one I think I'm going with this one okay and um, so there you go uh, that's my color so I pick my color I've got my font and I could go get some form but maybe the color in the background is acting of, as a form right now so I'm going to be happy with this and what I want to do is zoom in control plus so I want to see the text a little bit better and uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text effects so you see on here sometimes people I want to do something so you see I'm going to click it and I'm going to oops control Z I don't want a mask I want to create a uh, stroke on here so stroke is like a little line that goes around your text it's very commonly used in graphic design so you will see if I have a stroke I'm gonna actually go with a color and I'm gonna select let's go with black and let's see how that looks okay so you see you can see the and I'm gonna shrink it Wow look at that that pops right away so you see uh, font you're really improving your font so sometimes people don't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed Frederick Nietzsche okay um, I'm gonna just show you a couple other effects you may want to add bevel so it gives it a 3d look so you can uh, play around with that I like uh, let's go contour here no which one is it 
bevel. There's one here that's like chiseled hard. I'm just looking for it. There it is. So it looks a little bit sharper and you can go and play around with it like this. It's popping more. So I'm going to go with that one. And you know, you could even put a, a shadow. So we could go uh, drop shadow. This is the color I have. Maybe I want to go and get this color. So, and let's put, try that again. Click all the way down here, click OK. And so, you know, you got these colors are meet, meeting what's up here. So it kind of matches and, and makes the poster look even nicer. Uh, you can even put an outer glow. I'll let you play around with these, but basically you're adding some text at that. So now I need to do something with my Frederick Nietzsche. Whoops, I forgot to apply all that. That kind of is a bummer. Give me a sec. Let's see what we can do with the title here to make it stand out a little bit. So I'm going to go and get, um, click on here, again, text effects. And let's just, uh, let's just go with, uh, well, a stroke's always a good idea. So it's always good to see it. And I don't know if I want, I'm going to go and get this color. So I'm going to go and get the color over here. Click OK. And let's see if that works. Mm, not sure. So it's kind of an iteration process. We were thinking about it. And I'm going to go with black, because black's always, let's go gray more, so it's not as prevalent. So, and I'm, I turned it off, I'll double click on this, and I want to, maybe outer glow, and that outer glow does a, a good trick on it, so maybe I'm going to go with that, so maybe I want to go with a normal blending mode, pops out a little bit, and I'm going to lower the noise opacity on it, it looks a little too bright and so I'm starting to get closer to where I want so I'll let you play around with this so the th last thing I said is you want to get form so form could be an icon and I'm going to recommend you go get what's called a PNG online so what is that let's have a look so sometimes you will find what you're looking for so I type in Nietzsche because I'm going to put a photo of him and I click on image and maybe uh, if you want sometimes clip art might be the best way to go and maybe you think it's cute. So one thing, click on this. And one thing you need to add is an app in Chrome called um, View Image. So there's a good chance you're, you don't have it because we reset all the computers up. So um, when this shows up, we'll double check. And it actually does look like it's a PNG. So that's good news. Uh, but I'm actually not going to use that one, OK? Because the PNG will come in as transparent. I downloaded the PNG, which you see it down here. So now I need to insert file. So this is a little bit of trouble, but let's let's just go place embedded, and we're gonna go get that file. So it's in my downloads. You need to find out where stuff's getting downloaded in your computer, um, and you know there's a couple ways to do that. One thing I do is I'll click on D, then I'll click on the date. Know, I'll get the last thing that was downloaded. That's usually the best way, okay? So when I click on the date, it's way at the top for me, so I'll go here and I'll bring it in. I don't know what size it's going to be here, so I may have to resize it. So that's perfect. So, you know, I just want to show you this is a really important uh, skill in Photoshop. It's Control T, which is transform. I'm going to transform it to the size that I want. And, you know, I thought this would make my poster look good. I'm going to have a photo of him. And I'm going to just press enter. Now I can click control T and I can also like there's a couple of skew, you know, a couple of interesting tricks that I can use, you know, and play around in here to, to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm done my poster. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to save this. Probably I've already told you this because this is going to be more than one activity. But usually when you work in Photoshop, you want to save something in what's called a working file. So in this case, we're going to call this poster intro and it's a PSD file okay so I'm going to click a uh, save so the PSD file is the what's called a working file and why is that called a working file because it has all the layers all the work that you have but this is not what you upload to Google Classroom so when I'm done in Google Classroom what I do is I go file and I click save as and I'm going to save it now as a JPEG because that's what the internet is full of JPEGs and PNGs the difference between a PNG and a JPEG is a PNG preserves the transparency around here. So if I had this on a transparent background, it'll just upload the face. Um, so I'm going to just save this uh, into one layer. Okay. I'm 
this is canceled but I just want to show you something okay um, a while ago if I had copied and pasted the PNG look what will happen if I copy and paste the PNG it doesn't actually work so if I went to my website here and wrote you know copy image and paste it it, it shouldn't work okay now you may still want to do that so you bring it in and there's the magic wand tool here as long as I'm on the same layer and I click here I can click delete and there you go so that's a lot quicker than file embedded so maybe that's a trick that you want to use and I'll leave that up to you I'm going to delete this and I'll press uh, control D to get rid of the marching ants and the marching ants are the little things you see when I have a selection and I'm going to click delete and I'm going to click this guy's gone so I'm now going to file save as and I'm done my project so your goal is to upload your poster to Google Classroom those who paid their class fees will get a copy printed and um, if you did you won't get one just save as and we're going to go JPEG okay and it's just regular JPEG page intro save okay, if you have any questions please let me know click OK